Welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and it's spring semester 2013. This week I'm going to teach you about script tools. And a script tool is a menu based dialogue that allows a user to specify input, output, and various parameters. And these are all passed to an ArcPy Python script as uh, text parameters that your Python script can use. So for example, here we have a dialog input data text file. It filters for text files. So if I do a search with this folder, and if I look in this folder, it only shows the files with an extension .txt. So that's going to be our input text file. And that is going to be from this text file. So basically our Python script will read this first header line and then skip that header line and then read the x, y coordinates that's going to define our polygon. So this will be the same data set that we worked with last week. And then in our script tool we'll specify where our output's going to be located. So we'll put it in this geodatabase called test and then what we're going to name it. So I'll call it test poly feature class, whatever you want to call it. And then we run our script tool. And the script tool reads in those XY coordinates and basically uses those as vertices to create this polygon. And then also our Python script computes the area and puts that in two fields. So we have now the area of that polygon in hectares and the area of that polygon in acres. So the nice thing about script tools are the user doesn't have to know Python scripting and yet they can use your Python scripts very easily by executing this script tool. The other thing that's nice is we could use this script tool on many different text files to create many different polygon feature classes. And the feature classes could be in a shapefile in a folder, or they could be feature classes in geodatabase containers. Okay, here's another script tool that uses an insert cursor that we developed last week. We developed the Python script for this. So basically, we have animal locations, and we want to create a path in between each pair of locations from these animal locations. And the script tool filters for only points. So we could browse to a workspace or we could just look at what's in our table of contents and it will list only the point feature classes or the, only the points layers. And then it basically wants to know where do we want to output our container for outputting. So I'll put it in this geodatabase. And then we run our script and it will automatically name the output as a function of this input. Okay, so what it did was it took our input and then it just added lines underscored to the name of our input and then it created a line between each pair of locations. Okay, you also build a script tool that uses a script with search cursor. So here from last week, we've got our climate stations. And this script tool basically just tells you input a climate station. And then what it will do is it filters for any point feature class layer. So here we have two feature class layers. So let's do Fairbanks and then OK. OK, so it automatically names an output table as a function of the input. So it just basically takes that input name and then adds mean temperature .dbf as the output. So from our Fairbanks station, it calculated the winter temperature mean was close to zero. The spring temperature mean was close to 34 degrees Fahrenheit. And the temperature for the summer mean was about 60 degrees Fahrenheit and then the fall mean was about 24 degrees Fahrenheit. So it did that using a search cursor 
and basically the January through December temperatures that were in the original climate station record. Okay, we could also run this tool and we could browse for um, point feature classes and then it lists each of these as a point feature class. So if inside this folder I've got polygons or polyline feature classes, they're not listed because basically it's filtering for point feature classes only. Okay, here's another example that we'll use a search cursor. We've got some boreal ecoregions in Alaska, and what we want to do is have a script tool that, given some point feature class and this polygon feature class, boreal ecoregions, compute the density of points within each feature class. So basically, I load my lightning uh, points from last summer and say OK, and then the script, Python script, will calculate for each ecoregion polygon what's the density of lightning strikes within that ecoregion polygon, and then that will be added as a field in the ecoregion polygon. So after the script's done executing, we have for each polygon how many lightning strikes were in that polygon, and then what's the density of lightning strikes per 100 square kilometers? Okay, the other script tool you're going to work with this week is an update cursor type script tool. So here's an example. We've got a Canudi National Wildlife Refuge boundary, and then we've got wildfire polygons in Alaska. And what we want to do is cut out all the fires inside the refuge boundary and then calculate the correct area of these fire polygons inside the boundary. So the problem is these are both shapefile feature classes and therefore if we use the standard clip geoprocessing tool it's not smart enough to update area after it does the clip. But we can easily write a script tool that will use that clip geoprocessing tool and then use the update cursor and update the correct shape areas after the clipping is done. So then basically we run our and we're going to basically take our fire polygons that are inside and outside the refuge boundary and we'll cut them using our Community National Island Refuge boundary and that will basically use the clip tool and the clip tool will output to this shape file and then we'll use an update cursor to correctly update the area of those polygons. So we do have these polygons that were cut out by the refuge boundary. And then if we look at the table, we have two fields that are correct. So this would be the area of the polygon in whatever the linear units are squared. So in this example, they'll be meters squared. And this will be the perimeter of the polygon in whatever the XY coordinate units are, which are in meters in this example. So the update cursor basically correctly updates polygon area and polygon perimeter by grabbing the shape. And then once you have the shape, acting the shape area and the shape length to correctly retrieve those shape properties. Okay, and another use of the search or update cursor would be a script tool that's going to flip lines so all the lines flow north to south. So this is similar to the geoprocessing flip lines tool in the edit toolbox, but the problem with that one is you have to actually select the lines you want flipped. This is a much more automated process, so any line that's not flowing north to south is flipped. So in this example, here's a line it's flowing upstream, it's not flowing north to south. So this line will be flipped. And here are two other lines not flowing north to south. So these two lines will be flipped. So we run our script tool. So we have to specify streams and then run our script. And it does flip those lines north to south. So this was the line that was flowing upstream incorrectly, this line and this line. So now all the lines are flowing north to south, or in this example, flowing in a downstream direction. So that's what I'm going to teach you this week is how to build these script tools so you can basically use Python scripts and have a user who can use your tools without, have, without having to know about Python scripting.